Hi, everybody. This is Anne. I remember as a new pottery student setting my first goal with clay. I thought a mug would be an easy project. It's just a small cylinder with a bottom that would hold liquids, right? Well, actually, it was more challenging than I thought, but the challenge of making and decorating mugs is still one of my favorite goals to set for myself. In this video, I'll demonstrate three of my most favorite ways to hand build a mug using some unique hand building techniques. The first mug I'll make will be a template built mug. I rolled out a quarter inch slab between two wooden rollers. I ribbed it with a wet rubber rib on both sides. I created a cone shaped template that I set on top of the slab and lightly traced around it to mark out my mug dimensions. I wanted to leave a smooth area at the top for lip space, so I moved the template a little below the top rim and traced another line. For the decoration, Jim sanded down the edges of this dowel rod so each side was sloped and it would create a type of stamp. Starting at the widest edge, I held the dowel rod on point and began indenting it into the clay. I continued this pattern of indents, creating a quilted smock pattern all the way to the top line that I made. I took my time to make sure my edges were touching. When I was done, I replaced my template, cut the template out, and took away the excess clay. To make the mug, I first used this beveling tool along one of the smaller slab sides and cut the edge away. I used a scoring brush and scored that edge. I gently flipped the slab over and beveled the opposite small edge, scoring that as well. For this project, I used a large styrofoam cone as the mold. Leaving the plastic on it, I cut away the widest part, thus leaving the top to mold my clay around. I slipped one of the scored edges, then wrapped the slab gently around the cone. I lightly press the two edges together, trying not to alter the texture. One way to seal the seam is to use a needle tool or even restamp the texture tool into the notches. For the bottom of the mug, I rolled out a smaller quarter inch slab and ribbed it. I placed it on my banding wheel and traced a circle into the clay. This helped me center my mug body onto the slab. I traced around the body, then removed it. I scored the inside of the line that I just traced. I also scored the bottom edge of the body. I removed the styrofoam mold, then twisted away the plastic. Now I forgot this time, but you should slip one of the edges, then replace the body and cut away the excess clay.
Using a wet finger, I pushed the bottom slab so the edges helped seal the outer seam. I used the back side of a paintbrush to reinforce the interior wall seam. I wet my fingers and rounded the top rim of the mug. To seal the interior bottom seam, I rolled a small coil and pushed it against that edge. I used a paintbrush to work it in. So I have less chance that the rim will warp, I used a wet finger and stretched the rim outward a little bit. The clay has a memory and will want to flatten back out like I originally rolled it. Stretching the clay will help retrain it to stay round. On the outside, I used a pointed wooden tool to lift that bottom edge up and exaggerate an undercut edge. I was always taught that a mug shouldn't look as though it's growing flat out of the ground. Also, this move is important for what I'll do in a minute. I wired the mug off the banding wheel and placed it on top of a piece of plastic wrap. I want to do one more thing to the mug bottom. I want to round it. I'll use the styrofoam half sphere for that. I placed the mug inside the half sphere. I used a wet kitchen rubber spatula to push and stretch the bottom of the mug down against the rounded mold bottom. I let the mug stiffen up inside the mold. When I took it out, the bottom was rounded. You can see a nice band between where I undercut the clay and where I pushed it out. Here's one I made earlier where the clay is stiffened and I tapped it on the table to create a flat spot for it to sit. The rim is still rounded and I attached an extruded handle and imprinted that with my texture as well. Here's a variation I made using my handmade texture roller. The difference is that with my finger, I push the center of the clay downward to create a concave indentation which gives the mug a place to sit. Here it is all glazed. I glazed it with Georgie's Interactive Pigment and eggshell wash over that. My white glaze is on the inside. That texture looks to me like a quilted smocked fabric. I just love that. For the second mug, I'll combine a slab and coils for a unique look. I began by rolling out an eighth of an inch thick slab big enough for the template. I placed a sheet of plastic wrap over the slab and flipped it over. The wrap will keep the slab from sticking. I traced lightly around the template to mark out my workspace. Again, I marked an upper lip band around the rim section. I pinched off a little bit of clay and began rolling it into a long, thin coil. Note that I roll it from side to side gently. Softer clay will work better for this process. The clay will begin to dry out as you roll. When I got to the size that I wanted, I put a little water over the coil to soften it back up. I pinched a little clay off the coil and rolled it into a spiral. If the clay breaks as you roll it, it's too dry, put a little more water onto the coil and try again. I placed it into the corner of the workspace of the slab. I pinched off more of the coil, bending this piece, and I placed it to the side like a flower petal. I repeated this all the way around the spiral. I took more clay and created borders around the flower. I then sculpted a leaf. I continued to fill in all the holes with straight coils and balls of clay. The goal is to fill up the entire template space by sculpting clay coils into various shapes and patterns. It may look like you're creating a heavy piece, 
But remember, these coils are being attached to an eighth inch slab, so overall it shouldn't be any heavier than normal. Once the bottom space is covered, I position straight coils along the top band. I wanted to make sure the coils were firmly attached to the slab. To do this, I gently rolled my rolling pin over the design to flatten them slightly and embed them into the slab. Don't over roll or you'll lose your detail. Now here's one I created earlier. I cut the template out and repeated all the steps from the first mug, just keeping the bottom of the mug flat this time. I used the same coil patterns on my handle so it would echo the mug design. This mug has a fanciful, almost retro look to it, so I went with that vibe and glazed it with the colorful Tangelo Celadon glaze. Finally, I'll demonstrate a coil mug that has no seams that we're calling a faux throw. I started with softer clay than I usually do. It needs to be very plastic. I began rolling it on the table until the clay was about one and a half inches in diameter. I cut from the center of the coil to the size that I wanted. I'm shooting for a four inch coil, so I used my shrink ruler along that 14% side. I wired that off as straight as I could. I'm gonna be using this thin dowel rod that's about the width of a pencil. I marked the center of both the top and the bottom edges of the coil, then began to insert the dowel rod into the top center mark, keeping the dowel as straight as possible. I stopped about halfway down the coil and pulled it back out. I turned over the coil. I repeated this through the center mark on the other side, this time pushing it all the way through the coil. I turned the coil on its side and applying equal pressure to both sides of the dowel rod, I rolled the coil, stretching the diameter of it so the center hole will increase. Now I've seen people do this technique where they had quite a few ever increasing sizes of dowel rods, which would be the ideal. I skipped a few sizes and just used what I had available, which was this next size. I placed this in the center hole of the coil and began stretching it out. I was able to get this two inch mailing tube in the center. The clay wanted to stick a little to the cardboard, but I was able to stretch it out a little bit more. When the clay wall was about a quarter inch thick, I stopped rolling. As the clay cylinder was a bit wonky, I wanted to round it out. I had this PVC pipe that fit into the newly stretched tube. I simply worked the clay around it with my hands. Remember, rolling the coil will dry it out, so I wet a rubber rib and ribbed any drying cracks smooth. I steadied my needle tool against a ruler and cut the top of the coil so the rim was straight. I rolled another slab out and put it on my banding wheel. I centered the body onto the coil. I cut the excess clay away and worked the bottom seams together. I repeated all the steps from the first mug project to reinforce the interior seam and stretch the rim out a little bit. Now here's what I ended up with. Looks like I could have thrown this on the wheel, right? 
Here's one I made earlier where I drew a blocky floral pattern and scraffitoed the line designs into it. If you'd like to see this decorating technique, check out the video link above. I used my white liner glaze and glazed around the bottom decoration and applied clear glaze over the top band. The black and white is just so dramatic. I hope you enjoy making these. Let me know what your favorite hand building mug design is in the comments below. Thanks to the newest members of our Little Street Pottery Research Facility team. If you'd like to join the team and earn a title, click on the Super Thanks button or the link to buy me a coffee. It also really helps us out if you hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. See you next time in the studio.